Hey everybody, before I get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of ways that you can engage with me on a more personal level. I have a few avenues set up and I keep focusing on one and I figured, why don't I make a short little video talking about all of them real quick before we get into these uh, episodes. So first thing, Patreon. There's a link in the episode description and every episode description to the Patreon, as well as uh, a video on the feed called Major Announcement that has all the details of what each tier offers and how much they cost. I implore you to check that out. I offer a lot of cool shit for my patrons. Uh, second thing, the Discord channel. There's also a Discord link in the episode description and in every episode description. I have multiple channels set up there for each show that I'm covering, and it's a great way to just engage with me. I have a channel set up for... Uh, uh, MMA talk as well. I'm a big MMA fan. So if you're an MMA fan, you can check that out as well. There's a link to the discord in the episode description. And then lastly, oh, the Facebook and Twitter, social media, follow me on there. I post news on there. When I say news, I mean like, hey, I'm stopping covering this show. Hey, I'm starting covering this show. Let me know what you think about this. I do uh, live watches of things on Facebook where like I'll check in and say, I'm watching so-and-so show. And then I'll like live comment while I'm watching it. And that'll be cool if maybe you watch that show too and you want to watch along with me or you're watching it later and you want to see my thoughts, which are usually pretty entertaining because I'm usually pretty high when I'm writing them. So uh, check out all those links in each episode description and let's talk about this episode. Peace. One mic, one mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. One mic. Yeah. All I need is one mic. Hey everybody, welcome back to One Mic, and today I'm here to talk about Season 1, Episode 7 of Amazon Prime's Gen V, entitled Sick. And this episode title here uh, revolves around one of several big reveals uh, we got in this episode, which isn't just that Shetty wants to infect all soups and make them sick, but also why she wants to do that. Uh, I thought this was a, a, a really good episode to set up the finale, but... Man, oh man, was it predictable. I mean, and that that really, it took away some of my enjoyment of this episode, especially since the episode relied pretty heavily, I think, on some big reveals that I kind of feel like Ray Charles could have seen coming. Uh, I, I wouldn't say this show or The Boys necessarily uh, relies on plot twists, but they're a big enough feature to the point where I expect them. And when you, when you make trickery a feature... Eventually, the audience catches on and begins to look for trickery and the signs of it. And, and that's what I experienced uh, with this episode because none of that, none of the reveals uh, landed for me because of that, because I saw them coming a mile away. And fairly early in this episode, I want to say about, about 15 minutes in, uh, Jordan and Marie break into Shetty's office and discover a flight manifest from a crashed plane that has her husband and daughter's name on it. And instantly, I'm like, oh shit. That must be the plane the Homelander and Maeve allowed to crash, thus giving her a motive. So when they confirm it like half an hour later, it doesn't matter to me because you gave a colossal clue that this was coming a half hour prior. And the thing with Newman taking the virus and, and, and popping Cardosa's head, I mean, I don't think there's any way you don't see that coming if you watch the boys. And, and then they're really obvious leading up to it with Newman making light of the information that Marie gave her and asking Cardoso if, if, if anyone else can replicate the virus. Like, these are like, I, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it. Like, these are really remedial attempts at trying to obscure uh, what you have planned. Like, these are day one trip tricks. Like, tricks. Like, the shit that you would see, like, on CBS primetime. Like, I'm certain everyone watching this video has seen a show or a movie where a character goes... And you're the only person with this information before they kill that character. So, like, I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't want to shit on the episode for using a tired fucking strategy, even though that's precisely what it did. Um, but I'm just saying that the reveals were big, and they were and they telegraphed the fuck out of them by screaming obvious hints at us rather than just dropping breadcrumbs. Uh, but I just wanted to get that out of the way because uh, while I don't like the uh, why well, I didn't like the predictable nature of this episode, I did enjoy the choices themselves. Like, I think they did one reveal in particular in a pretty cool way, and I'm curious what Newman is going to do with the knowledge that she's gained, as well as what's going on uh, with Save the Last Dance, a.k.a. <laughs> Andre's father. But I'm conflicted on some stuff, too. Like, for instance, they really pushed this idea of class in this episode. No, no pun intended. Uh, not like a classroom, but class like societal class. And the soups are in one class, and uh, all the rest of us normies are beneath them. 
Now, not only is that a fairly common theme in superhero stories, but I felt like they did a really bad job of trying to convey that idea in this episode. Like, so Newman comes to the to the God U campus, and she's on stage, and she's doing this interview, and all of the students, including Rufus and Sam, are listening to her, her interview. And Newman talks about soups deserving the same rights as everyone else, and says she knows how most of them are actually law-abiding citizens. And then one of them jumps up and goes, you don't know shit, narc. And I'm instantly I'm like, that's not how you respond to a compliment. Like, are you, try are you trying to say that most soups are not law-abiding citizens and that's how she doesn't know shit? And then Rufus jumps up and goes, you will not control us. And they all start chanting. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck are you even talking about? Like, she didn't say anything about controlling you guys. And I found that scene so nonsensical and off-putting that I rewound it because I'm like, you probably missed the part <laughs> where she implied that she was going to control them. But she never gets around to that <laughs> and before Rufus starts objecting to being controlled. And I feel like they wanted to get to that place of, of, of feeling like the politicians want to control them. But they jumped the gun before the politician even said anything that implied that. <laughs> and I just, I thought that was goofy. Uh, uh, but no, I, like I said, I rewound it to check and she says exactly what I said, that most of them are law-abiding citizens and deserve equal treatment and, and how that, how that statement warrants you will not control us as a response, I don't know, but that's the kind of shit I'm talking about when I say I enjoy an aspect of, a ep of an episode, but at the same time I'm conflicted. Like, I'm interested in the class warfare, but what the fuck was the you will not control us shit? Anyway... Moving on, let's talk about how we picked up from last week. Uh, so, last week, everyone learned about Kate. Uh, this week, Kate wants to redeem herself by helping everyone catch Shetty. And her plan is to go to Shetty's house and get her to confess. Mm, excuse me. Which is a good plan, except no one trusts her to do it. So, Andre says he's going to go to. Jordan and Marie devise a different plan to break into Shetty's office. Uh, she's in the... Shit, sit, oh, boy. Since... She's in the city. Shetty's office since he's since she's in the city. Oh boy, that's a motherfucker. <laughs> okay, let me start over. Jordan and Marie <laughs> devise a plan to get me tongue twisted. No, uh, the, uh, they devise a different plan to break into Shetty's office since she's in the city, uh, get evidence, and then just tell Newman everything they know since she'll be on campus. And Shetty's in the city because apparently she's meeting up with Grace Mallory, who we know from the boys, uh, who considers Shetty's plan to be a war crime. Uh, mainly of note in this scene is that we find out Grace's grandchildren were on the same plane as Shetty's husband and daughter. I don't know if we knew that from the boys, but um, maybe we did, but I, I, I don't remember, so I made note of it uh, learning in this episode. And when Shetty returns home, Kate is there without Andre, more on that later. And starts to do her manipulation thing. And, th and this is the scene that I mentioned earlier where I said that uh, they did one reveal, I think, in a pretty cool way. Uh, I liked how when Shetty said that she loved Kate and was holding her bare hands, Kate said, you're telling the truth in a way I think that was meant for us to infer that she believed Shetty when she said that he loved her. Like, like when she said that she loved her. Like, you're telling the truth. Like, oh, okay, you really do love me. In actuality, it was Kate using her powers. It was a command. Like... You're about to tell everyone the truth. Like, like you're telling the truth, motherfucker. Like, that, that's how that, uh, how that was actually meant. And I thought that was actually a pretty cool uh, play on that sentence and then, then reveal of what, uh, what was actually going on. So, uh, Shetty then reveals that the school is a front and the students there, they're not studying, they're being studied. And Kate uh, then makes Shetty kill herself very awesomely and then makes Marie not help her, which I thought was another cool moment that's easy to miss. Because she, like, like Marie rushes over there to try to uh, try to help Shetty stop bleeding. And Kate touches her with her bare hand on her hand. It was like, I remember what she said. But she was like, said something to the effect, like, don't do shit. <laughs> and then Marie just sits there like, oh, okay. <laughs> but um, Marie is devastated that Kate's made Shetty kill herself. Not because she loves Shetty or anything like that. But because it brings back the traumatic memories of, of how she killed her own parents by accident. I also liked how Kate apologized for making her uh, relive that in that moment. But then I also liked how Sam called that justice. Like, I like the uh, setting up of the conflict within the group. Like, you, 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 and that's fairly common, too. Like, a thing where it's like uh, the conflict between groups on how you handle 
uh, being mistreated. This is the same concept of like, are you team Martin Luther King or are you team Malcolm X? And that's very much what this is. Like, are you team Kate or are you team Sam? Not Kate. Are you team Marie or are you team Sam? And like I said, I like that idea of the internal conflict, especially especially when one of them is as, as highly powered as Sam is too. Now, a reveal that I did not see coming was what we learned about Newman. We knew Newman could pop heads from the boys, but now I believe we're to understand that it's because she has the same abilities to manipulate blood that Marie has. And learning that Newman has the same powers as Marie is one thing, but learning that Marie could potentially have the same powers as, as, as Newman, the reverse of that, letting us know that if she were to choose, that theoretically Marie could pop heads, uh, that's something entirely different altogether that I find pretty intriguing. And then we also learn that Marie is the benefactor that Shetty referenced early in the season that essentially is why Marie is not only protected at the school, but was even able to get into the school in the first place. And now the last thing I want to talk about before I wrap up with some thoughts is uh, Save the Last Dance and why he had a seizure. And I don't mean the medical reason, I mean the narrative reason. Like, he was meant to be involved in this interview with Newman, then he has a seizure and he's taken away and the whole event goes left and Andre is taken off the board since he went with him. Now I gotta believe that somehow... Someone made him have a seizure as it as a means to get him out of the picture or to get both him and Andre out of the picture. Otherwise, why write that into the script? Like, it had no impact on the surrounding events unless they really want me to buy, uh, buy this is the moment that's going to repair the relationship because I don't, and I don't care about their relationship anyway. So they've had, like, two seats together. So I feel like um, Save the Last Dance being taken out of the picture when it comes... Uh, when it came time to do this interview, I feel like that's going to matter uh, at some point in the finale. So that's all I got for this week. Oh, well, technically it's not because I have the finale tomorrow, but I'm going to close with a couple of thoughts and I'll see you guys tomorrow for the finale. So uh, I haven't done this in a while, but there were a couple of things I wanted to touch on, pause, uh, that didn't fit in the main video. Uh, I love the opening scene where Cardosa is showing uh, Shetty that uh, that one terribly fucked up soup kid and Shetty looks at the kid dying and vomiting with all these bumps on the body and she goes, can we make it airborne? <laughs> like, like, man, Shetty's a piece of shit. And then Cardoso's all appalled and he's like, if we make it airborne, it can spread like wildfire. And Cardoso's like, what kind of wildfire? <laughs> like, man. <laughs> like, everything, <laughs> everything Cardoso was saying that was meant to be a, ter a deterrent it just seemed to me like, it seemed like it made her wet. Like, yo, like you said wildfire? I don't know. I just thought that was funny. Like, man, she evil as fuck. Like, getting horny, like, the worse it gets, the hornier she gets. <laughs> and uh, even though I kind of uh, like Sam and Emma together, I continue to find uh, their relationship and the scenes, uh, their scenes within the episodes be pretty boring and point pointless. I'm sure they won't end up being pointless, but they sure as fuck feel pointless right now. And then lastly, the fact that Rufus had on a MAGA hat was not lost on me. Um, it didn't say Make America Great Again. It said something like Make America Safe. I don't even think it had again on it, but it was red. It was meant to be a MAGA hat. I thought that was funny. Uh, so uh, that's all I got for I'm going to say today because I'm going to watch the finale tonight. And please, Lord willing, I can get that video out tomorrow for you guys and get back on time and get some of these videos out on a more timely schedule and get the channel back uh back growing the way it should be. So uh, until tomorrow, peace.